just going to ask you, uh, how many of you have heard of the Valley of Elam? Valley of Elam. Valley of Elam? Yeah. Oh. No? Okay, how many of you have heard of the Philistine War? Philistine. Okay, so how many of you have heard of David and Goliath? That's a point of view, right? So I'm talking about the same thing. So we thought about that. So that's the point of view I'm going to cover, right? So, okay, there's a reason why I'm bringing this up because, um, so the last one and a half weeks I've kind of been hanging out with uh, a bunch of investors from the US. Primarily, Dr. Chaps from Stanford College Medical School. We were going to different presentations, right? And you see many startups, great ideas, come in and talk about. I mean, it's very confusing English, right? So I was talking about the same thing, right? David and Goliath. Instead of saying David and Goliath, I talked about the Philistine War, which is essentially where David and Goliath actually fought the battle. And if you go back in time, the value of Gila is where the two guys went, right? So it's all same things, different words, right? But you want to, when you are talking to, let's say somebody, you want to use a frame of a point of view which is common, right? Which everybody kind of understands. I think that's what I'm trying to bring up here, right? In my conversation. So this is actually the picture of the battle area. Um, so you actually had up here. You had the the Israeli kingdom chaps hanging out, and up here you actually had the Philistine warriors hanging out. The Philistines were from Trent, by the way. So whoever has to attack this guy, these guys have to come down, climb up, which would be a risk, or these guys have to come down, climb up, which would be a risk. So both of these guys. So the typical way it used to get handled at that point in time is. Each side will say, okay, I nominate a warrior, you nominate one, we'll come down and we'll fight, and whoever wins, wins the war. That's the strategy at that point in time, right? Um, so this is actually the group right now, where apparently David and Goliath had the fight. Now I'm guessing it got constricted due to many different things. Right? And I will talk through that. So what is the conversation around David and Goliath? Right? Um, and so, so come, okay, this was a fight, right, which we thought happened uh, there, well, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so the point of view, so currently what is the point of view we have, right, is that David was fast and courageous, right, he was very aggressive, he didn't have any tools, right, um, and he had God on his side, right, he was from the kingdom of Israel. And Goliath was surprised by David, right? Uh, and David picked Goliath with a slingshot through an element of surprise. That's the point of view we have, right? So now let me twist that up by saying that scientists are now saying that Goliath was huge, he was seven foot plus. But they're now saying that he probably had a pituitary tumor, right? So how does that change the point of view? Significant, right? Why? Because if you have a pituitary tumor, you're not going to be able to see clearly, first of all, right? If you have a pituitary tumor, you're going to be slow. You're not going to react fast, right? Um, so that's one point of view. Second point of view is that at that time, there were different classes of warriors. So there was the soldier. Then there was a significantly different, more deadlier guy called slingers. Apparently, these were people who actually could, could use projectiles from very far away and hit the enemy, right? So what if I told you that David, being a shepherd and to protect his sheep, had to learn how to use slingshots? Now the point of view changes, right, significantly. Now you go from, okay, David is not really a shepherd, he's probably trained as an aggressive, you know, soldier, more or less, right? Second point. What if I also told you this, that, you know, uh, that Goliath was thinking this is going to be a man-to-man -man fight between a warrior and a warrior. So, when he saw the shepherd coming in the fight against him, he was a little 
confused to the point where because his, of his eye problem and because his ability to move slowly, he was not sure how to react. Right? And what if I also told you this, that David, looking at Goliath, who was probably fully armed, you know, he had a sword, he had a spear, he had a javelin, and so David knew that all these weapons will reach a certain distance, so I probably need to stand at a certain point, because he has protected his sheep from attacks from wolves, uh, tigers, lions, and things like that. So he has a very good idea how far his slingshot will go. And he sees on the forehead is a gap in the armor. So how does that change the point of view? Significant, right? And that's what the point of view is all about, right? This is what I spoke about. So, double vision, severe vision problems. Um, he had what was known as uh, uh, acromegaly, which is actually a pituitary tumor, right? And people who have pituitary tumors suffer from this. How do I know this? Well, I actually ran by a Harvard Medical School doctor yesterday. So he was actually talking a lot about this, and we were discussing many different things around that. This was about slingers, right? And this was about the forehead, right? So actually, the David and Goliath thing wasn't really an act of God or anything else. It was just that David was very, very well prepared for the problem he was facing, right? Significant point of your change. And why I'm sharing that is because I've seen this. Whenever you're looking at a problem, or you think that there's a problem you're trying to address, it may not necessarily be the point of view. You probably have to look at it from a very different angle. You have to look at it from a customer viewpoint, from a market point of view. Well, I've got this great tool, so what? Is it going to really fit into the marketplace? Will I make money out of it? Right? These are often your points of view. Is it viable to do? Right? Um, points you have to really, really think through. And what I've seen many a times is because of our ability to develop great technology tools, I find that people come in with one point of view, which is I've got this great idea, I've developed this tool. Now I really need to figure out whether it's going to fit into the market, whether I'm going to make the money, whether I'm actually going to even develop a market on this one. Right? I was seeing this, I saw this even yesterday, I uh, met somebody, very, very cool tool, uh, probably spent, according to his own accounts, upwards of $5 million developing what I think is a neat tool for people who had spinal cord injuries, but I don't think it will ever sell. <laughs> and the person was trying to raise money, but, you know, good luck to him, but very, very, very difficult, right? Just because you have the technology wherewithal and you have that point of view that what I'm doing is cool, really, really does not mean you're successful. That's, that's what I want to say, right? So there are three points of view to understand your business model, I think. The first is, so this is, okay. So one other thing is, I've seen, because Google is available and the internet is all over, people just go Google stuff, right? And say, I Google this, I have this much information, I really think this is a market. This I'm saying, go and talk to people, man. Go and talk to your customers. Go and talk to prospects. Find out how many of them are really, really interested. Are they going to write a check for you if you're going to pitch your product? Will they write a check today? That's do a dipstick approach. You know, that's something I've seen for whatever reasons. Many, many people don't do that. So I recommend do that. This is the customer market competition view, very similar to what David did. You know, uh, when it's assessment. Then the put yourself in the customer's view, which is why as a customer would I need to buy a product, right? Why would I be influenced to buy? What is the wow factor? You know, is it going to solve a significant problem for me? Is it going to help me get away from something which I don't like doing? Well, things like that. I think it's very, very critical to address this. So that's what the point of view is. So I hope I've been able to give some perspective. I apologize, you know, this was... I just came late last night from all this touring, so I, I knew I had to do something today, so I put this up real quickly in the morning. Hope this provides you with some perspective on a point of view, right? Uh, any questions?
Great. So I have the confused all of you are making more of the so I don't know which side. Anyway, thank you. Thanks.